Hello students, welcome to the next online perio class. So today's class is about periodontal plastic surgery. So firstly we will talk about how it got this name. So earlier it used to be called as mucogingival surgery and this name was given by Miller in 1993. And at that time they dealt with three specific problems. One was aberrant frenum, second was inadequate depth of vestibule and third was insufficient attached gingiva. So at that time these three problems were dealt under the heading mucogingival surgery. So over a period of time the scope of uh, surgeries that could be done on the gingiva and the mucosa improved and today when you talk about periodontal plastic surgery this name was changed as periodontal plastic surgery by the world workshop of clinical periodontology in 1996 so today when you talk about periodontal plastic surgery it covers a vast area of topics i can say perioprosto relation periortho relation ridge augmentation aesthetics around implant and so many other headings are dealt uh, under periodontal plastic surgery Okay, so firstly we will go for the definition of periodontal plastic surgery. The definition is very simple. It is the surgical procedures that are done to correct or eliminate the anatomic developmental or traumatic deformities of the gingiva or the alveolar mucosa. Okay, so in periodontal plastic surgery, today I thought to talk about the problems that are seen in the aesthetic zone. Okay, so to first uh, you have to know certain basic concepts of the aesthetic zone then I will talk about the problems in that area ok so firstly um, aesthetic zone will have yeah this is a model as always so teeth marginal gingiva attached gingiva vestibule and then there is the lip mucosa ok so point number one the uh, length of the incisors ok so you can see these diagrams over here. The ideal length of central incisors is about say 10 mm. Okay. And uh, about of the lateral the ideal length would be around 7.5 to 8 mm. So the first point that you need to know. Okay. The first point is the length. Second point is the width. How much should be the width of the incisors? There is something called as a width to length ratio. The width to length ratio should be 0 0.78 to 0 0.85. Okay. So which means if your length is around 10, your width will be about 8.5 mm. Okay. So the width to length ratio should be between 0 0.78 to 0 0.85. Okay. Then next coming to the gingival zenith. What is the gingival zenith? Like you can see in this diagram, the level at which the most, uh, what do you say, apical portion of the marginal gingiva of the central and of the canine should be in the same line. Okay, see like this, the central and the canine should be in the same line, whereas the lateral can be around 1 mm below it. Okay, so that is regarding the gingival zenith. The next is gingival pigment. The ideal pigment of the gingiva would be coral pink or orange pinkish in color. The next important point in aesthetic is symmetry. And when I am talking about symmetry, I don't only mean uh, the symmetry of the teeth on either side. Symmetry like uh, the midline between the centrals should be in alignment with the midline of the face. So once again, let's quickly uh, revise the elements of the aesthetic zone. One the length of the incisors the ideal length of the central incisors around 10 mm the ideal length of the lateral incisors about 7.5 to 8 mm okay next is the width to length ratio the width to length ratio should be around 0 0.78 to 0 0.85 then the gingival zenith the level of your central and canine should be in the same line whereas the lateral should be 1 mm below gingival pigment okay uh, in pigment you will have normal coral pink or uh, orange pink appearance then the symmetry symmetrical with the midline the next is smile line I didn't mention the smile line earlier smile line is like this either you could have a high smile line 
or a medium smile line which is considered the most aesthetic and then the low smile line okay so these are the different types of smile lines and these were the uh, elements that are there in the aesthetic zone so what are the problems that are most commonly seen aesthetic in the aesthetic zone people most commonly patient complain that they have gummy smile or they have recession or they have a black triangle which is loss of interdental papillae or they have black color pigmentation of the gingiva okay so i guess yeah so these are the most uh, common or aberrant frenum so these are the most common problems that people come with okay so today's class would be about gummy smile now what is a gummy smile best explained in diagram this is a gummy smile basically uh, over exposure of your gums while you're smiling now an important point to understand over here is the reason you have a gummy smile could be different the reason for gummy smile the etiology can either be muscular if you have a hypotonic lip like you see in this diagram or it could be skeletal where you have excess of maxilla vertical maxillary excess could be one cause why you have a gummy smile like this or it could be dental where you actually have short crowns or it could be gingival where gingival uh, hypoplasia is responsible for your gummy smile so these four diagrams will help you to understand that the etiology of gummy smile can are different okay now the treatment of gummy smile will be depending on the etiology now the treatment of gummy smile will be dependent on what is the cause for gummy smile in your case okay so um a little bit extra than what is given in karanza which will help you to diagnose what is the cause for gummy smile uh before i tell you about the flow chart you have to know one concept that is the normal incisor exposure during rest so when i am in rest position like this what is a normal incisor exposure like you can see in this diagram okay so ideally the normal incisor exposure should be around 3 to 4 mm okay so now let's come to this flow chart suppose you have gummy smile but you have normal incisor exposure during rest okay if so it's either because you have a hyperactive upper lip okay or you have short crowns the short crown may be because it's attreated or maybe there is no attrition if it is not attreated then it is because of altered passive eruption or gingival hypoplasia okay i hope i have not confused you if your uh, incisor exposure at rest is normal but you still have a gummy smile then it is because you have short crowns or you have a hypotonic upper lip if you have short crown it's either because your crown is attreated or it is because of gingival hypoplasia or altered passive eruption okay so this is if you have normal incisor exposure at rest but still you have a gummy smile now if your incisor exposure at rest is increased yet you have gummy smile also then the cause could be either you have short upper lips or your occlusal planes are not right and there is incisor over eruption or there is vertical maxillary excess okay so i hope this flow chart helps you to diagnose what the cause for gummy smile is in in a particular case that comes to you okay now let me talk about the treatment of gummy smile so if the cause of uh, gummy smile in your case is because of altered passive eruption or uh, gingival hypoplasia you could do a procedure called as crown lengthening okay so i'll show you with the help of my model so i hope this model is clear to you okay now what i have tried to show here is this is your marginal gingiva and this is the attached gingiva this is a mucogingival line and this is your alveolar mucosa 
okay so if you are having a gummy smile and if you see that the tooth length is around uh, let's say 7 mm i told you 10 is the maximum possible right it's around 7 mm so if it is around 7 mm you want additional 3 millimeters more okay so you will mark over here the additional 3 millimeters that you need okay now what is important is beyond where you are planning to cut the gingiva there should be at least 3 mm difference with your alveolar bone okay or in other words i can tell you that once the gin once you have marked where you want the gingivectomy to be done minimum 3 mm of keratinized tissue should be remaining which means marginal gingiva attached gingiva for all of it 3 mm should be there if 3 mm is available beyond what you in intend to cut then it's okay if you just do a gingivectomy like this this is called as the crown lengthening procedure you just give an incision up and give an incision from down and remove the tissue okay such that after excising this also 3 mm is remaining okay now for example if you intend to cut over here okay for uh, the incisor to have the correct length you have to cut over here but you are seeing that from beyond where you intend to cut 3 mm of keratinized tissue that is your attached gingiva marginal gingiva is not available then what should you do you are supposed to place an incision place an incision and reflect your flap okay so this is the underlying bone you have to reflect the flap and you have to reduce the size of the bone and then reposition the flap okay when you do this when the flap heals you will have adequate length of your incisors you will also have adequate amount of keratinized tissue so the point here that has to be understood is if you have to do just a crown lengthening procedure without osseous reduction you have to make sure that beyond where you intend to cut there is 3 mm of keratinized tissue available. If 3 mm is not available you should reflect the entire flap, reduce the level of the bone and then suture it back such that you will have adequate length of your incisor as well as adequate amount of keratinized tissue. So I hope this is clear the treatment uh, if you have. A gummy smile because of altered passive eruption or uh, gingival hypoplasia. Now, uh, I'll just briefly tell you what are the other treatment modalities that are done for gummy smile. If you have a vertical maxillary excess, you can go for orthodontic intrusion uh, like this, like you've seen in this diagram. Now, if you have a hypertonic upper lip, you could go for uh, lip repositioning surgery where they will reduce the depth of your vestibule such that you cannot, your elevator muscles cannot like you know uh, uh, get so stretched that your gums are visible. Uh, it looks like this when you do a lip reposition surgery or there are options to do Botox fillers for fullness of smile. This is one example how Botox help to correct gummy smile okay so these are the different treatment modalities available for gummy smile which should be used based on what the etiology for gummy smile is i hope this is clear to you so the next video will be about uh, the next aesthetic problem that is recession